Hey guys, Omar here. I've been using the Nikon Z6 III for about three weeks or so, and I think it's time to report back some of my findings. Finding number one, it's pretty good. At first I kind of was like, eh, it's a work camera, blah, blah, blah. Watch my last video so you can understand what I'm talking about. But now we're kind of getting to know each other a little bit. And I was able to use it at a family party and I was able to capture my favorite thing, which is people's peak emotions, smiles and hugs and love without even looking through the viewfinder, kind of just interacting with, you know, the guests at the party. And that's what I do for a living. So the camera and I gelled in capturing what I needed to capture. So in the situation that I shoot, the autofocus was completely snappy. Uh, I tested autofocus single focus versus continuous. And just like all the other mirrorless cameras, it's probably better un unless you have Fujifilm. In Fujifilm, stay in autofocus single. But in all the other cameras, change it to continuous because the cameras are actually quicker in continuous focus. I also had my son run, he runs track, but I had him run at me at uh, high speeds with the uh, shooting the 70 to 180. And I was, it was able to grab most of the shots. There definitely were some that it missed, but I was shooting 20 frames a second. <laughs> and also I tried it shooting the 1.4 lens and the camera did a decent job there. Uh, that's an adapted lens, but most of the shots are in focus. It would be interesting to see the, how this camera compares to the Z8 and the Sony a7 IV or the a9 III, but I didn't do any of that. Number two, the colors. So I compared the colors of the Nikon Z6 III with the Z8 and the ZF, and I'm happy to report that the RAW files are pretty much very similar. The only difference I saw was in the Z8, a little bit of a brown difference in my uh, Miles Morales <laughs> character, but just so minute. The super bright EVF, in the last video I kind of complained like, why do you need a super bright EVF? And some of you said, it's great if you have sunglasses, which totally made sense to me. You have sunglasses and you're gonna use the EVF with sunglasses, like it's a bright day. That's all fine and good, but how come Nikon didn't put that in any of the marketing? <laughs> you know, people with sunglasses on like, hey! that didn't happen. But it, you guys came up with an excellent, excellent idea. Now, speaking of the EVF, the colors in the EVF differ from the colors on the screen. The screen is a little bit more subdued and the EVF is a little bit uh, richer, like a little more color in there. And that's because the EVF has a P3 color space. It actually has more colors in the viewfinder. But what I found was when I put up the uh, picture on my color calibrated monitor, I kind of think that it matches the back of the screen more. I don't know why that is. That could be a Lightroom thing. Uh, as opposed to the very saturated or more saturated colors in the EVF. So that's one thing I found is I'm gonna rely more on the screen than the EVF. Next thing to report is the playback with the screen close glitch is still here. Now bear with me. I made a whole video about this on the ZF. Now the problem arises when you have the screen closed and you're using the EVF and you have playback on. Why would you have playback on? It's a mirrorless camera. I hear you over there. The reason is, if you're an event photographer and you shoot flash, it's nice to see a playback quickly of your flash exposure. But what happened on the ZF is if you have the screen closed, there's a chunk, 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 like a weird little glitch, which blacks out the image a little bit more. And we're having the same problem on the Z6 III. If the screen is closed and you have playback on, there's a little bit more of a blackout. To prevent this problem, you have to have your screen open so you're gonna lose battery life. <laughs> so you EVF shooters out there, just be aware of that. Now the next thing I actually witnessed online and then recreated it myself. I saw some discussions on forums and some videos that if you shoot video with this camera in N-Log and you kind of try to bring the shadows up, there's some flickering that happens in the shadows. Not only flickering, but red and green flickering and I was able to kind of recreate that. And so maybe that's something to be aware of if you're shooting video in N-Log that um, 
there's some weird flickering that's going on. I also shot with the Sony and there was nothing that was going on with the Sony uh, like that. So I also noticed the videos are a little noisier. Uh, there seems to be a lot of shadow noise. So I need more tests for that because right now I'm using the Sony. I shoot all my videos with the Sony and I don't know if I'm gonna use this for YouTube or for filming. More tests needed. By the way, if you have this camera and you can confirm some of the things I'm talking about, leave a comment in the video, the video below, <laughs> the comments below that says, hey, I have that chunk issue or there is flickering in the video shadows and log thingy. Now, dynamic range on the camera. Uh, this is something like a conversation that's been going on, on online that the semi-stack sensor isn't as good as the ZF. I haven't done any specific tests, but I can tell you what I have observed. When I brought the images into Lightroom, they didn't seem as forgiving as the Z8 and the ZF. That's the first thing I noticed. And then I decided to run some tests. And from what I could kind of gather on the, let's put it this way, you better watch your highlights if you shoot this camera. Because I think it's about half a stop to three quarters of a stop less forgiving than the Z8 and the ZF. And with the Sony, Sony is like amazing with the dynamic range. You can bring some of the detail back, uh, not if it's clipped, but you can, break, you can bring back more detail in the highlights if they're too bright than the Z6 III. So again, watch your highlights with this camera. The front dial I had complained about in the last video, it seems to be a little smoother now. So it just needed lots more turning but I hope in the next iteration of cameras that we get a little bit more of a Z8 front and rear dial. I know in the last video, I wasn't super excited about this camera, but the more you use it, cameras are tools. They're not people to hang out with like the ZF, which makes me happy. This one's a tool and it's, it's doing the job. So I think that it is a great camera for event photographers, for wildlife photographers out there, landscape photographers, you don't need this camera. I would say go with the Z7, an old Z7. That sensor was great, by the way. Um, and um, yeah, if you're just a casual shooter too and like the flip up screen, I'm still gonna recommend the Z6 II. I think that camera was a lot more fun than this one. It was, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, no, that way, hang on. Yeah. All right, I'll see you guys next time.